Ballerino. Today I'm making a video because despite my many requests, BuzzFeed and Solve still haven't covered this. Today I want to talk about the Bottle Street time slip. Felt fitting given that we're in spooky season, you know? You know. As you all know, I live in Liverpool. Liverpool is probably best known for the Beatles and football. And this has nothing to do with either of them. <laughs> Underneath all of the, like, artistic wonder that is Liverpool. It's believed that people accidentally travel through time on one specific road. I'm not saying it's true, I'm saying there's a lot of stories about it and it's very interesting. So let's run through a few of the things that have supposedly happened on Bold Street. Probably the most famous story is the story of Frank and Carol. Frank was a police officer and Carol was his wife. The year was 1996. They were shopping in Liverpool city centre and Carol just went down Bold Street to buy a book. Frank went to a different shop and then he went back to Bold Street to meet his wife. I felt something was a little weird when he got there because all the cars looked like they were from the 50s and 60s. But he didn't really think about it too much. All the men were wearing hats and mats and the women were in headscarves, like full skirts and old hairstyles. He gets to the Waterstones that is wife had got into and in the window there's just handbags shoes and brollies like no books it's clearly not a waterstones anymore outside the shop there's a woman there and she's wearing modern looking clothes probably the only person on the street who appears to be they walk into the shop and it's a waterstones again the woman goes oh i thought this was a new shop and walks out it was looked into afterwards when this sort of went around papers and things and that shop was a shop called Crips that sold handbags, shoes and brollies in the 50s and 60s. This next one I quite like. Um, so this is the story of a woman named Imogen. Her sister was having a baby so she went to Liverpool City Centre to buy some new things for the baby. But yeah, it's on the corner of Lord Street and Whitechapel. Feel free to look it up but I'm probably not going to bother with maps. Maybe I'll put a map up. We'll work it out. And just assumed it was a new shop. Um, picked up a few things on her way round and she was surprised at how cheap it was and then she went to the desk and went to pay on her card. The person who was serving her looked kind of suspicious and went to get their manager and the manager just told her they didn't take cards. So she put everything back, she left and was like, no oh, that's a shame, that was kind of cheap. And when she got home she told her mum. Her mum then informed her that that mother care had shut down years and years ago and that it was a bank now, it was actually her mother's bank now. Imogen was like, no, like clearly they've turned it into a mother care and they went back and lo and behold, it was a bank again. The next story I'm going to tell is my absolute favourite, favourite one. Love it. This is about a guy called Sean. <laughs> I don't think that's his real name. I'm not even sure any of these people's real names, but that's what they're sort of referred to as. 2006. The guy's just gotten caught shoplifting. <laughs> He's running from security. He's running down Hanover Street. Then he turns down a dead end called Brooks Alley. He was really out of breath and his chest started tightening and then he realised that wasn't necessarily from the running, it was more like the atmosphere around him. He waited, expecting the security guard to sort of spin around any minute, but he never came. He carries on heading down Hanover Street. The road looks a little different and the cars going past look old fashioned and the roadworks that he'd literally just run past were gone. Everyone was wearing weird clothes. That's sort of a recurring thing in this, people seem to be wearing weird clothes. He crossed over to Bold Street and saw some traffic lights that hadn't been there before. As he kept walking he sort of started to suspect that somehow he'd gone back in time. He was a little concerned, like how was he going to go back? He took his mobile out of his pocket. No signal, obviously. He saw a kiosk, it was selling newspapers, and he leant over and glanced at the date. 18th of May, 1967. So now he's panicking, full on. He thinks he's time travelled, he doesn't know how to get back to 2006. And then he took his phone out a little bit later and it was working. And he looked around and he was clearly back in the present day. But down the road, people still seem to be in 1967. Now, a lot of people think this is just him like coming up with an excuse after he'd dodged a security guard, but the security guard actually came forward. He was chased him, ran into that dead end alley, and he wasn't there. A paper actually researched Sean's account and everything was fully historically accurate. So either he did a lot of research, or this happened. 
This next story is about Central Station. As any, if any of you know Liverpool, Central Station has one exit that goes out onto Bold Street. So a man going to see his girlfriend gets on the train. He gets to Central and walks down the ramp from Bold Street. And he saw a cafe appear basically out of nowhere. He definitely hadn't been there when he was there a few days prior. Everyone inside and outside the cafe were in early 1900s clothing. The woman, he recalls, had big hats. <laughs> so he assumed something was being filmed. That sort of thing does happen around there. It's not that weird. Or like, there was a theme day on. Something like that. He glanced ahead and then looked back and the cafe was gone. Could it be just a story? Sure. Could he have come back in time? Maybe, I don't know. Now let's talk about Linda. It's gonna be a long one, guys. It's the late 1990s. Again, Linda leaves Central Station and walks towards the Waterstones that we've mentioned in previous stories. A horse-drawn carriage goes past. She said that the people on it looked like the people on Quality Street Pins. I'll put a picture of that up for those of you who aren't from the UK. The ladies were wearing bonnets with brims and the men were wearing top hats and dark suits. Again, she assumes she's walked onto a film set or something, but there are no cameras and as she steps onto the road, the scene changes back to modern day. Around 2006, let's talk about Mr. C. Mr. C is in a hi-fi shop at the top of Bold Street, like where the bombed out church is. He turns around and is surprised to see like lights coming through the bombed out church. The Von Dot Church doesn't even have a roof, it's called that for a reason, it was destroyed in the Blitz. He hasn't been there for quite a while, so he was like, oh great, they've renovated it, that's amazing. Then he walks back later that month. The church was dark and derelict again, and silent. Obviously, even from the stories, you can tell that this isn't all just like that street, it's sort of the area around it. Uh, things like this have been reported across Liverpool and the Wirral. But they seem to happen mostly on Bold Street. Some have suggested, and I'm not saying it's true before you all have a go in the comments, this is because the Liverpool Underground forms concentric circles and Bold Street is the epicentre of those circles. Personally, I don't buy it, but it's up to you guys what you think. I just find it interesting. I love talking about the Bold Street time slips, as most of my friends say. Um, and whether you believe they're true or not, they're great stories to tell and hear and think about and I don't know it's nice to think that all our timelines are connected somehow I think let me know in the comments what your favorite story is and if you know any other stories about the Bowl Street time slips because I'd love to hear them and give me a cheeky like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later bye